Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today the package in R that I wanted to show you is called RemPsych. Uh, Psych without the H, if you are doing a Google search for it. And this is a package that gives you results that you can format really nicely into APA format for publication in journals, particularly in psychology. So it is very focused on psychology and the psychology way of presenting statistics. But even if you are not a psychologist, you may find it really handy. It produces nice tables, some other nice little bits and pieces. We are going to look at some of the things it can do. All of the code that I am using here will be linked up in the video description. It will link up to my website. You can copy and paste all of this code. So you will need to, from CRAN, install the RemPsych package. So as always, click on package, click on install, start typing in the name, you'll see it, you can click on it and install it. Uh, later on, we are going to use uh, ggplot, so we can set up the tidyverse there as well. So the first thing we're going to look at is some t-tests. With the t-tests, we can do a single two sample or independent samples t-test, but we can also give a set of different response variables. And so we've got response, and here I'm giving it six different variables from the MT cars set, and then the group, so the two categories are from uh, the AM variable. We will run that, and then we'll have a look. And so basically what it does, instead of using R's default, it instead takes all the bits and pieces we would normally want, and puts them all into a single row. So here we've actually done six t-tests for six different dependent variables, and for each it has given us the t, degrees of freedom, p. Because it is psychology based, it has given us Cohen's d as well, which can be a useful measure of effect size, as well as confidence intervals. You might be thinking that this is a little bit risky or foolish doing six separate t-tests uh, without any correction. It can do that as well. If you're not familiar with multiple testing, the multiple testing problem and correction, this is definitely something that will make you a better statistician or analyst. Go and have a read of the multiple comparison problem. Uh, the Wikipedia pages are actually pretty helpful with it. And so we can use a correction here. We've got the Bonferroni correction. If we rerun this one, what we see is that the p values have been adjusted to account for the fact that we have done six tests. So whenever we start doing multiple tests, the chance of one of them being a false positive, it's cumulative. So it's, it's going to get bigger and bigger the more independent tests that we do. And so this correction basically adjusts for that. So we've got the correction there, Bonferroni. So that's kind of handy, but really what we came here for is some nice formatting. And so we have this function nice table. And if we have a look at nice table, it produces us an APA formatted table. It's got the line above and below the header. It's got the line at the bottom. It is centered and rounded as we would normally expect for APA. APA has particular rules around p-values. So they should be three decimal places if they're less than 0.001, we say so. Uh, another important APA consideration, uh, p-values never have a zero on the front of them. They've got the Cohen's D, they've got the confidence interval, all nicely formatted there. If we like, we can add highlight equals true. And when we do that, it will highlight and bold the lines that have a p-value less than 0.05. So if we are looking perhaps at a really big regression table, uh, it will work with regression results as well. This is really quite handy. You may or may not be using this in your uh, publication, but it may just be handy, the highlighting for looking at results as you go. All of these can be saved to Word, so we just save our table into an object and save as docx and it will give us a Word document and there's our table all nicely formatted in our Word document. We can grab that, copy and paste it into the journal article that we are working on. If we move now to a regression example, 
So we have a simple regression here. It has a uh, miles per gallon as a function of weight and uh, number of cylinders and the interaction effect between the two as well as gear. We've got empty cars is our data that we are using. So just one of the usual built-in data sets. And so I'm going to show you two different things here. The first one is a way of looking at a couple of the assumptions of the model. So we'll run the model. We can then use nice assumptions. A lot of the functions in this package start with nice underscore. So it takes the assumptions and then nice table is just going to present them more nicely. And we run that. And so that gives us just a couple of our tests that we would normally be running for checking the assumptions. So normality via the Shapiro Wilkes, Homo Scadasti via uh, this one, uh, and the Durbin Watson for checking whether the residuals are autocorrelated or not. This very last column, it just counts up how many of these could be problematic. So it's got a couple of thresholds, and for each of these ones that could be problematic, uh, it will count up. So it'll literally either be a zero or a one or a two or a three. And that, and this example is not particularly useful, but again, we can actually give it a whole series of regression models. So you can imagine this table actually being a long table, a whole lot of different regression models. And we could see what the assumptions look like as we change what variables and how this model looks. If we want to look at the results from this regression, we've got nice LM. Again, we've got nice table to format it nicely. The only other thing we've got here, if we go b.label with a capital B, it changes the B to a beta. If we leave that out, then we will just get a lowercase b. Putting in that capital B will just give us a beta in our table in the column titles. So there is our regression results. Don't love the fact that it has the dependent variable repeated here, because this is just one regression model. Uh, I guess if you wanted, you could chop that one off. But we've got our predictors, we've got our degrees of freedom. Here's the beta I was talking about, uh, otherwise it'll say B instead. Our T, our P, and our uh, partial squared correlations, which again is something that's maybe a little bit idiosyncratic to psychology. Quite often that's something that they will include. Quite often they are fitting either regressions, uh, ANOVAs, which of course are just a special case of regression, and they'll have different kind of partial, partial sum of squares, partial measures to try and isolate the, the different effects of different variables within their model. Okay, so the last thing we're going to look at is some contrasts and some violin plots. So here we've got uh, nice underscore contrasts. We are going to be looking at the classic iris data. So we'll run that one, have a look at this table, blow it up, stretch it out a little bit. So here we've got the different comparisons. So sepal length was our variable of interest. We have the three different categories. So we've got each pairwise comparison. Uh, and again, degrees of freedom, T, p-value. Again, the uh, Cohen's D. This time it's, I believe, adjusted. So the R is representing it's a robust Cohen's D. Uh, you can look in the help to see the exact specifications of how that varies and the confidence interval uh, for the difference in the means between the two groups. So nicely done in the APA formatting. It's got the lines, everything set up how we would want. Really just a nice time saver. So this is all stuff that we don't need to mess around with R. It's pre-formatted. Uh, we can use that save as docx and it will export it for us. The last thing that we will produce is some violin plots. Uh, so here, this is going to show us the distributions uh, for the sepal length uh, across those different categories. So I'm going to make it as an object. We'll take a look at it. Uh, and you can see just resolution of my screen has maybe that look, made that look a little cartoony. Uh, if we zoom in, we may choose to adjust the, the size of these fonts and bold and so on but we can see the shape of the distributions. Uh, we've got the little confidence intervals inside there. Uh, and then it's also giving us the 
asterisks indicating the significant differences between the different groups. If we want to save this, uh, we can use GG save, and here I've got some sample code. If we wanted to export it as a PDF, if we maybe wanted as a uh, JPEG or a PNG, uh, we could just change the details in here. Uh, also in our window, we can always use export, save as image, and we can make the adjustment there as to what we are exporting as, but you may find it easier, particularly if you're doing a lot of this, to have it just set in the code there instead. So this was just some examples out of the REM psych package. There is a number of others in terms of uh, mediation and moderation, uh, some other kinds of analysis that you would see quite often with uh, work in psychology. Definitely recommend checking it out. It's quite a new package, so you may not have come across it before. Uh, I really hope this was helpful. If you liked it, please hit like and subscribe to the channel for more R videos.